Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we are going to talk about content security policy, what it is, why you need it, and how you might use it in your own application. So the main reason why content security policy exists is that we want to protect ourselves against cross-site scripting. I just want to explain cross-site scripting with one very specific type of cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting is always uh, like abbreviated with X. As, as. Uh, what I want to demonstrate or to explain is like stored cross-site scripting. So let's make a practical example. Let's say you are on YouTube and you're scrolling through the comments, uh, maybe through the comments of this video. Let's imagine like normally people put text in the comments, right? Something like, ah, nice video, or they have like a question, they ask something, that's all cool. But literally anyone can write a comment on YouTube, right? So let's say you're a hacker, uh, then you could put something like this. So you, instead of putting like a text, you could put an HTML tag, which is attempting to load like some script from your website. And this is especially, this is very dangerous because if you save this comment, then like the server is going to store it in the database for everyone who is scrolling through the comments, like afterwards, um, this text here will be loaded. Yeah, and that itself would not be a problem if the text you put here is actually treated as text and not as HTML. But just as it happens, oftentimes, you know, we're all just humans, we just forget about it. So if you by accident say, okay, the inner HTML of this div is the text, and you just say, oh yeah, people are just going to put the text, then you have a big security vulnerability. Because what this means is that once this comment here is posted and stored in the database, everyone who's going to scroll through the comments after that um, will have this additional HTML tag in your website. And all of a sudden, everyone who's watching this video, um, everyone who gets on that page, uh, the browser will just load like this script from this origin and then the script will execute evil, uh, do evil things. And that's why this thing is called a cross-site scripting. So basically the idea is that some attacker is able to inject some script into another person's browser or the hacker can do so by exploiting the belief that everything that comes from your own server is kind of safe. And what I've just shown here is a special type of cross-site scripting, which is called the stored cross-site scripting, simply because the attack is actually stored in the database. So there's also other types of cross-site scripting, uh, reflected cross-site scripting, DOM-based cross-site scripting. But I think this one is like the easiest variant to understand. Okay, and what we want to do with content security policy, we want to protect ourselves against this. And the idea here is that we just come up with a policy that tells the browser, look, um, no matter what happens, you're only allowed to load script from this origin, this origin, or this origin. And you're only allowed to load images from that URL or this origin and the other origin. And you're only allowed to load fonts from here, here, and here. And that is the main idea of the content security policy. So you basically hard code which from which origins you kind of expect to load content. And even if something like this happens, so even if you make a mistake here and, and you know you just forget about it, even if that happens, you will not have issues. If you have like a proper content security policy, the browser would just block the script so it would not load it. The way this works is you can just return an additional header in your server response. So that means once the person goes to the website and the HTML file is sent back, you just add like an additional header and that header is called the content security policy. Inside of this policy, you have directives and you have values. And the important thing I want to make clear here is that it's not key colon value, basically the default syntax in JavaScript, but it's just the key, so to say, the directive space and then the value. And then you have a semicolon and then you can have the next directive. As long as your server has like this header, you're pretty well protected against like most types of cross-site scripting. So that's pretty good. And another thing I wanted to mention is that you can also put this inside of the HTML file by using this meta tag. So you can say, hey, here's like some metadata and the HTTP like equivalent is the content security policy. And then you put the string inside of like the content property here. And yeah, this is like how this works. So hopefully this is this now made clear what the purpose of content security policy is. And let's just take a look at the documentation. So 
I would recommend you go through this MDN web docs. Uh, I think it explains really well what it is. So with the explanation I just gave, I think it's this page is way easier to understand now. You can scroll through all of this and you know, there's also a couple of examples uh, over here. And these examples are very useful because you just see what's going on. So for example, here, this is, I think, also important to understand what is this default source and what is this self. So the thing is the content security policy allows or gives you very fine grained control. So you can say, I only want to load fonts from this uh, origin and I allow scripts from this origin and I'll allow images from this origin and so on. Sometimes people are not, you know, that specific. And in that case, this default source kicks in. So think of like a, if you think of a switch case statement, this is like the default clause, right? So if there's nothing specified, it will just say self and self means like your own origin. So that means if you don't explicitly like specify, um, that this URL that we can load like fonts from this URL, then the default source will be self, which will mean if you attempt to load like the font from another URL, it's going to be blocked. Yeah. And you can, you can see like more sophisticated examples here, right? You can see like media sources and, and these type of things. I'm not going to go through all of these directives. I also don't think you need to learn them by heart. I think you just need to know what it is. And then you can like systematically and step by step develop your own policy. And what I would also recommend is that uh, you go over here and click on this because here you can see like here it explains like all the different directives uh, you can have. The thing I just mentioned, where can I load fonts from? Where can I load images from? Uh, where can I load like uh, objects from and so on and so on. So you can see here, yeah, script source as well. So these are the directives that exist. And the question is now is what does that mean for you in practice? So in practice, this means if you have a server or if you have any type of like website or front end that you return to the browser, regardless of whether you're doing server side rendering or whether you use, uh, you know, whether you have a single page application and you make like cross origin requests to like an API gateway later on, you should always include this header, like this meta HTML uh, tag, because if you do, you are just very well protected against these stored and uh, reflected cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, yeah, so make sure that if you deploy whatever you want to deploy, your React Vue.js app, uh, that you have some sort of content security policy and then you can mitigate most types of cross-site scripting attacks. Yeah, another thing I just forgot to mention is that it also pro like the content security policy also protects against against packet sniffing. So that means if someone accesses like the page over HTTP, so unencrypted, uh, then you can say, hey, look, uh, I only allow traffic like from HTTPS, and yeah, you can use that in together with strict transport security uh, header, which is also a header you should add, and like so you're pretty well protected against most type types of cross-site scripting attacks. Yeah, so that's it pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I hope uh, content security policy, like the concept, is now a little bit clearer. I hope cross-site scripting is a little bit clearer. Uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Ask me some questions. Maybe if you have some video ideas, post them uh, below as well. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at production coder. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.